Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. Um, you know what? Before I get started, I'm going to be honest. This episode put me in a mode. Now, there's another woman. If I can sit there and find her um, channel, I will link it in the, in the description box below. Say that because she's going to be a lot more nicer and more gentle than I am. So, um, yeah, this is going to be those type of reviews. It's going to be one of those type of reviews. So, if you're if you're not there for it, I understand. And um, hopefully tomorrow's episode can probably put me in a better mood. Because this one did not, and I would totally understand. Here's the thing. This episode was half good and half pissed me off. I think we know the part that pissed me off. You know what? Let's get to that part. Let's get to that part. Let's just let's just get it out of the way. These two idiots. These two dingbat twins that are fighting. Still fighting. This is after they was like so. You know, listen, no matter who she chooses, we're still going to be good, right? Yeah. So in today's episode, they are both fighting like a pair of immature jackasses. Okay? Tony comes in there, and they want to sit there and ask Tony's, Tony's opinion. And Tony's like, yo, listen, I'm Switzerland. I'm not, I'm not there for any of that. Steve comes in, and he's just like, yo, I don't know what's going on with y'all two, or... What the hell that what the hell this is? But um yeah, I'm just gonna go inside and get some cookies. I'm not the whole time they're arguing back and forth, back and forth, you know. She's gonna pick me, she's gonna pick me, she's gonna be pick me. I'm just like all three of you idiots I can care less about. Okay. Um and I will get to that decision making because that's a whole other train wreck that happened in this episode with her dingbat mother. I usually like Paulina. I do. But in this episode, she pissed me off. Um, I feel like Ali's the type of person. Okay, and, and, and granted, this happens to both men and females. So I'm not going to sit there and try to make it seem like I'm being sexist or anything like that. But she is the type of woman. And men do this too. That will justify putting their hands on someone because someone said something. Oh, you said this to me and I didn't like it, so I did this. This isn't my fault. And I'm like, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a law against that. Now, granted, they're brother and sister, so it's whatever. But I feel like she's the type of person that will easily snap at somebody because they said something or they looked at her the wrong way and put their hands on that person and justify their actions. Fortunately, the law doesn't really care about whatever emotional state that you're in. Okay? Your ass is going to jail. So, Johnny says something immature. And Allie threw a pie at, her, at him. I guess this was supposed to be funny or something. This is supposed to be lightening up the mood, giving a little bit of levity into this episode because of, you know, the other part of the story. So I guess if that were if that's what they were going for, and the people who laughed, um, that's cool. I, it didn't really do a damn. Well, I wouldn't sit there and say it'd do anything for me. It, it annoyed me. Okay, it annoyed me. It straight up pissed me off. So after that happens, they both get a call. Off. Well, they you know Johnny gets a text from um, Chanel telling them that she made her choice because apparently people actually care about that. Now, speaking of that, um, Chanel is doing this whole, woe is me, I have to sit there and choose, I'm going to hurt someone. I was like, you know what, listen, if you're actually, you know, really concerned about them and the outcome that they're going to sit there and deal with, you would choose neither of them. You would go with somebody else. You wouldn't sit there and and try and break a bond, you know, break, a, break apart a bond like them. And granted, it can never really fully be broken, but it can be bent. Okay? 
You wouldn't do that. Now I look at that scene in Beyond Salem. And although I did not like that whole back and forth, oh, she's just flirting, there's nothing. No, that just pisses me off. Um, she did choose to not go out with either of them because she didn't want them to be fighting or having any sort of animosity between those two. You know, she didn't want to be the cause of that. So she decided to um, be the mature one and step away from the situation. So her talks about, oh, well, you know, um, you know, no matter who I choose, you know, the, you know, this, that, and the third, and, the, and you know, they're going to be fighting amongst each other. And this is what I call, this is what I call Paulina a dingbag. Okay, Paulina's like, oh, well, they're young, they'll survive, they'll get over it. You know, you got to sit down and, and do what's best for you. And I'm just like, God, in so many ways, I hate mothers like that. I, I seriously hate mothers like that, that won't really call their children out on their BS and will sit there and just placate towards whatever type of stupid ish that they're doing in their lives. And that's literally what she's doing. She snipped there helping her. She was, oh, pros or cons. And then she was like, pain us her vagina. And I'm like, what the f What? Oh, God. Ah. I love this show. I really do. Some of the decisions that they make doesn't make me happy. This is one of those acidizing decisions that they do when they think that this is going to be great and people are going to love it and yada, yada, yada. And I'm pretty sure some people do. Okay? I just don't have the tolerance, the patience to deal with that. So, you know, I guess she helps her choose. I I'm not going to lie. They go through their pros and cons, and I just kind of fast forward through it because I'm just like, I can't sit there and listen to her annoying ass voice talk to her dang badass mother a minute longer. So I guess whatever pros and cons that they had, there must have been good, I imagine. Um, so now we got that dumbness out the way. <sighs> Jake's ghost. I feel like sometimes I should be drinking wine when I watch this show. Jake goes, comes to see Ava, and Ava slaps Jake because she's like, you know, you left me, and you had to sit there and play the tough guy, and, you know, why can't you just give up the ring? And Jake gives just a very acidine reason. Okay? And what one of my subscribers told me, um, they're going to be switching out Jake for Stephanie. I don't really understand why they didn't bother to listen to the fans the first time. They wanted Stefan and they got they got Mechanic Jake instead. Maybe they thought that Jake was gonna be more relatable. Okay. Alright, I can I can see that. But you know, the fans have spoken. And you've done the exact opposite of what fans have asked for. I mean, that's very WB of them to actually do. WB is a terrible company. And they make the most ass dying decisions. They don't listen to their fans. And they do, <laughs> you know, whatever they think is going to work at the time. And I feel like that's one of those decisions that they made. So anyway, he's all like, oh, you know, I didn't want him to steal the moment and blah, 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 blah. Say so talk. They finally give their goodbyes. And she finally, you know, he gives her his goodbyes, and I'm just like, okay, sure. Now, Gabby is sent there talking to Kate, and Kate's like, yo, you gotta watch your back, okay? Because he got my shares, he's going after, um, he's going after chat shares, so it's, you know, you gotta watch it back. And Gabby's all like, ah, oh, well, you know, we do this whole road runner thing. And, you know, this is Cat and Mouse, it's Tom and Jerry, you know, this is, is usual. I'm not worried about that. Gets a call from, um, Ray. And I let her know about Jake's death. And, you know, she's upset about it. And Kate is upset about it. Now, Kate, Kate says something like, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. And I'm like, what do you mean, sorry for her loss? You dated him too. You felt something for him. The same thing is that you feel sorry for, her loss is like, what? 
but she does go to the bar and she does think about it more and you know she is a little broken up about it and Paulina comes over there and after finding out that um you know she's no longer with Rome um you know the other reason why she's upset is because of Jake now Gabby Gabby comes into the hospital room and she's all like what did you do to, to Jake you got him mixed up in your mob life and I'm like sweetheart do you really think this is the time to do this Seriously, this is your reaction. This is your first thought when you walk into that hospital room and you see her lying or you see her like kneeling by Jake's side. This is the, this is the, oh God. <laughs> this is the stupidity. This is the dumb ish that comes out of your mouth. So after, you find, after she finds out that, um, you know, they got robbed, you know, it was a mugging, she doesn't even, she doesn't even bother to apologize to her. She really doesn't. She's just like, oh, well, you know, Jake had my back. And even though, you know, we, we were different and, you know, we were strange and, you know, we didn't work out or whatever, you know, he was still a good person. It was like, uh, so we're just not going to apologize for that little acidine outburst that you just had like five seconds ago? No, you're not doing that? Then she proceeds to act like a vulture, Okay. She proceeds to act like a vulture, and I know people can sit there and say, oh, well, you know, she has to sit there and fight for the company, and he's already dead, and blah, 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 I don't care, okay? He has died less than 24 hours, and this chick is coming over there to try to get his shares. It was like, are you out of your goddamn mind? It's been less than eight hours. He's been dead, and What? So, she's all like, oh, if I don't have the shares, I'm not going to be able to fight him. I'm not going to have... Wait. She can't... He can't claim the shares if, if you're married and you're a widow. It, it'll, go to, it'll go to you. Okay, Gabby. Um, sure. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm impressed. You, you saw an opportunity... You said to hell with respecting the dead, and you found a way to sit there and stop EJ. I'm I'm so happy you can look yourself in the mirror each and every day with those type of decisions that you make. Nice. Um, Steve and Kayla were talking about Ava. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even listen. As much as I love Steve, I didn't even find a point of him actually being in this episode, or Kayla for that matter. And yeah, I know Kayla's in the hospital, but no, no, they they could have they could have took a sick day, vacation day, something. They 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 was not needed in this episode. So EJ wants to share us, and Chad's like, you know, listen, I've been a little bit busy because he was on the phone talking to Rafe, like, yo, what's what's going on? What, what's the progress in it? And he's like, yo, listen, I'm trying to get information on, you know, who, who murdered my wife, and you, you snuck that bitch into my ear about shares, like, are you kidding me? So, EJ's like, listen, I've, I've given you your time to grieve and everything like that, but, yo, I want those shares, I want them now. But EJ takes it a step further. EJ's like, yo, I need you to sit there and pack your bag, you can kick rocks. And Tony comes in there, Tony's like, yo, what's going on? And he's, he just has some, some cookies and everything, like, yo, he was really excited, and he walked in there, and you could just feel the energy, like, yo, did I walk in the wrong room? Jesus Christ. And, you know, he tries to, you know, piece out the situation. You know, EJ does say, you know, listen, my nephews can stay. You're the only person I have a problem with. But, you know, Chad is like, yo, listen, I'm, I'm going, I'm whatever. Tony kind of gets him to realize, like, yo, listen, father used to do the same thing, but he put family first. This dude literally just lost his wife. See, the thing about EJ is EJ... EJ gets to a point where he is so angry that things that normally you wouldn't say or do, you are past that point. Now, you feel like ish when you calm down and you start acting like a human being again. And I'm like... I get, I get taking the shares, okay? I get taking the shares and everything like that. 
But, you know, his wife just died. You know? Even coming at him with the shares might have been like, I get being angry. Okay? There's many forms. You can be angry. You could be like, yo, you know, listen, we just live in this house together. But, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy with you. Demanding the shares, otherwise he, he goes to jail. It's like, you don't think that he lost enough? Like, really? I even felt like that was a little bit too much. But now you want to sit there and kick him out of the house? Like, but that's how EJ gets. EJ goes to the extreme. EJ is one of those type of people that he comes across as super emotional. Okay? Like, he's, you know, when he loves you, it's, it's like, it's like you're a cloud nine. When he hates you, he's like damn near Lucifer himself. Um, and after Tony was like, yo, listen, don't do not do that, you know? Like, bottle example of father and given everything that happened to EJ, um, Chad, you, you, you're going too far. And he kind of realized that. And when Chad comes downstairs with the shares, you know, EJ, you know, even he realized he, he went too far. Um, well, after he went too far. Um, he's like, yo, you know, listen, I don't want you to leave. But he's like, you know, listen, I'm going to leave anyway. And I feel like that's probably for the best temporarily. Because they're so angry and so hostile to each other that a little distance would do them a world of good. You know? I, I just, you know, even though they have a big house, they're going to run into each other. And having that sort of animosity isn't good for anyone. Um, and Chad has kids, so you got to always consider that to him. Um, but, you know, he winds up leaving anyway. You know, Chad feels, I mean, EJ feels bad for having him leave, you know. I feel like that's about it. I really do. Um, like I said, if you haven't noticed, my demeanor kind of calmed down once I finished talking about some of the foolery some of the effery that was going on in this episode. I just, I, I don't, I don't have patience for that. And while some people may seem it as, as some, some sort of fun love triangle and, and no, I, I just, I, I can't do that. It just pisses me off too much. <sighs> but, you know, I do actually feel better. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the first time I actually did it. A review to SGH. It's livid. I was oh god, I was livid. Um, and then after I felt better, and I was like, ah, oh, this is fine. I should do this more. I think I did already say this before, but I will sit there and put it a post on it tonight, nine o'clock. It's going to be me, DC Soap Sanctuary, on JLJ Media's channel, Extra Connections. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, we're, we're going to get into some stuff. Okay? We're going to get into some soap stuff. Um, I quote one of his lives, and he seems like he's going to be having some very interesting topics. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, even though that me and James will bump heads on certain issues, you know, I mean, I always agree with him, but I, I respect his opinions on it, even if it's not necessarily mine. And, um, you know, the dude's working hard. I, I gotta, I gotta give him a hell of a lot of props because he's been doing this way longer than I have. Um, with his connections and everything like that. And just his, his over his his sense of confidence. Uh, I give him I give him props for that. See, a whole lot, I feel a whole lot better now. Uh, once I got that angry stuff out of my system, it was so much better. So anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully, I'll see everyone tonight. Um, nine o'clock. I'm assuming. Hopefully, around nine o'clock. All right.